All right, for more, I'm joined now by correspondent James Reinald in New York City. Good evening to you, James. You are in the viral hotspot in the U.S. at the moment. The governor of New York warning that hospitals will be hit even harder and sooner than expected. While well, you've got the U.S. president who says he wants the country to go back in business. I mean, do you feel like you are in a big blind spot of the U.S. president being in New York? Well, the governor of New York State, Andrew Cuomo, certainly thinks that the city and the state has been left in the president's uh, blind spot. Here we are, uh, the wealthiest country in the world, in many ways one of the most uh, advanced economies on the planet, and yet in the city with Wall Street, its key financial center, uh, Cuomo saying that we're not ready for the pandemic that's fast approaching, there aren't enough hospital, hospital beds, there aren't enough ventilators, and he described astronomical numbers, numbers that are fast increasing and doubling every three days. And it appears, James, that the virus arrived in New York City earlier than first thought. I mean, when you consider that with news that China is now easing restrictions where the outbreak began, I mean, what kind of grade are New Yorkers giving the federal government in its handling of this pandemic? Mm. And I think on that one, I think you could probably say that it's too early to call. I mean, every few minutes, you're going to hear an ambulance going down 2nd <clears> Avenue <throat> or 1st Avenue, either side of me. Um, but the death toll in the state so far has been 210, and we've got 26,000 confirmed cases. And so, you know, the real uh, impact of coronavirus has yet to come. As we've seen in other countries, it approaches slow and quietly, and then bam, hits you like a sledgehammer. Well, I mean, here the sledgehammer has not yet hit. And I guess it's not going to be until we've seen the hospital wards and heard from the doctors and seen the actual death toll from this crisis, the New Yorkers are actually going to make a final judgment call on that. Yeah, that would be terrible to have those images, the images that like we've seen in Italy and Spain. Governor Andrew Cuomo, he has emerged in just the past few weeks as a national leader, not just as a leader for New York State with his daily press conferences. I mean, the whole world has been watching those. Do New Yorkers, do you think they trust him more now than they trust the U.S. president? Mm. I mean, that's a good question. Andrew Cuomo hasn't necessarily always been the most loved of political figures. He's not exactly a retail politician, not so personable. But this crisis, in many ways, is playing to his strengths. He's been decisive. It's one of his characteristics. He takes charge of situations. He listens to the experts, and he sticks to the facts. And in many ways, that's what you want. You want this kind of fact and evidence-led approach to it. Hmm. When it comes to a comparison with the federal government, Pew Research did a survey recently, and basically across America, people trust their local officials and they trust their state officials and the Centers for Disease Control more than they trust the White House and more than they trust the, uh, the federal government. Trump, on the other hand, he's a New Yorker. He comes from the city, but he's never been wholly loved, wholly respected, and he isn't widely seen as a safe pair of hands for this crisis. James, I just have to ask you, there in New York, what are you seeing outside? I mean, we've heard from the governor that people have not been respecting social distancing or, you know, staying at home. People have been out in Central Park, for example. What are you seeing? Have people begun, you know, falling into line and staying, uh, staying at home? Well, I mean, it's a democracy, and the approach that's been taken by most democracies in this crisis is that you nudge people. You tell them how to behave, what's best for them. And I would say that, by and large, that has uh, been followed quite extensively. Most people have been cooped up in their apartments. On the times where I've had to go out on jobs, I've been taking the subway, and it's been largely empty. Um, sure, you can go to Central Park, and you'll see some people there. You can go to Times Square, you'll see some people there. There are people down in the street below me right now uh, walking around. Some people mm -hmm. do have to conduct their business. I would say that, by and large, people are uh, abiding by it, although it isn't being rigidly enforced enough um, to do what is called bending the curve of this mm -hmm. crisis in the right direction. Correspondent James Rhino joining us from New York City tonight. James, thank you very much. Stay safe and stay healthy.